though we say that adults can do, they are not able to do this. And that is why we tell them to use spacer. Adults also can use the spacer. So that it's not necessary that adults means only MDI. No, no. We can give MDI with the spacer. So that is another thing that we can keep in mind. So everyone understood the devices and how we take care of it. Okay. You will not put it into a baby mask straight away. You have to use it with the spacer. So when you are using an MDI, you have to use a spacer. <laughs> you have to use it like this and put the MDI here. This is how you are supposed to use it. It will come like this. Okay, so you can't use it only with a baby mask. You have to have the spacer in it. Not really, until unless you are buying the drugs in bulk and the capsules are sticking to each other. Otherwise, it's not a problem. Because these capsules are dry, unless your, your rota inhaler is getting wet. But then once you use it, you are supposed to keep it in the box. There is a box available around it. So don't keep it outside. Again, rota inhaler has to be discarded after six months. We don't you do that. We continue using the same rota inhaler. So that is a problem. The best is this one. 80 rupees, no problems, and capsules are cheaper. You can use it long term. When you tell them you have to discard this and use it after, buy a new one after six months, they do that. Now, these are the doses that are there of the various uh, steroids that we are using. Remember three of them. Betlomethazone, Budesonide, and Fluticazone. Now, out of the three, Fluticazone is used commonly because it's lesser dose. It's half the dose of Budesonide. So, if I want to give the Budesonide of 200 to 400, like Fluticazone, I can give half of that, 100 to 250. So, if I, when I use Fluticazone, I can decrease the dose to half. Except that Fluticazone cannot be used in children less than two years. Beclomethazone and Budesonide remain the same dose. Problem with Beclomethazone is more systemic penetration. So systemic side effects are more with Beclomethazone. Now what are the side effects I'm talking about? I'm talking about side effects of growth failure. Steroids long term, the most important side effect is growth failure. So whenever you have an asthma, you have to monitor the growth in your clinical practice. If growth is failing, either the drugs are not enough and asthma is rampant still, or you overtreat it with the steroids and that's the cause of the growth period. So if his symptoms are resolved and he's failing, that means steroids are high. If symptoms are persistent and he's having growth failure, that means you not properly treat. So out of the two, you definitely prefer budesonide as compared to beclomethazine. And criticazone has a lesser steroids. Now maximum dose though in adults is mentioned as 1600. Don't go beyond 800. 800 should be your maximum. After you reach 800, the growth failure really sets in. So when we start in children, there are two ways of starting. Either you start with a low dose and set up gradually. So today if I start medicine at 100 ml, I keep on observing the child. Best way is to do a peak flow meter every time he comes to you. His own standard you maintain. If he is well controlled, I continue the same. Even if he's after a month I feel he's not very well controlled on this, then I'll step up. So I'll go to say 200 mm. So I came to 400. Gradually I can keep on stepping up till I reach 800. If I've reached 800 and I he's still not controlled, I have two options. Either I increase the dose of steroids further or I add a beta agonist. Long acting. That's your sandwich or all of original. So these are the ways that you can do. That is one way. So you're gradually stepping up. If you do that, remember, lots of times patients get frustrated because you keep on giving them medications and they are not improving and they feel, what are you doing? The other way is to step down. So start with a high dose first. In children, usually we don't even go up to 800, we stick to around 400. So if I start straight away 400, so I am starting two puffs in the morning, two puffs in the evening, and I observe and I feel he's fine, then I can step down. Then I can come down to 200 then 100 only. When I'm stepping down, the child should be symptom-free for at least three months. 
before I step down. So today if I have started a child on some therapy and he becomes symptomatic, he is not really, or he becomes okay, don't step down in a week's time. You have to maintain him at that level for at least three months before you step down. So if you are at 400, so 200 dB and you want to step down, wait for three months, come down to 100 dB, again you want to step down, wait for three months, then come down to 100 in the night, then again you wait for three months. So by the time you are actually able to stop any medication, it will be a year. That is why you have to be very careful when you start. Once you start, it's going to be little long therapy. Some of them go on to lifelong. 5% go on to lifelong. What about adulting with As I said, astelin is a new drug. Astelin is your reliever. It's not to be used for a long-term control. Otherwise, sacrifice license will occur. So it's only to be used for your acute episodes. The question is on the longer beta agonist, yeah? like a salmeterol or formeterol. Can I use that? Yes. In children more than 5 years of age, I can use that as a steroid sparing. So if I think this child is very severe asthmatic, I, even if I am going to start at 400, he is not going to get control, I can start uracinoid or uh, floticasm along with a beta agonist together. So I will give 2 pops in the morning of a steroid, 2 pops in the evening of a steroid. I will give 1 pop of a beta agonist in the morning and 1 pop of a long acting beta agonist in the evening. When I am using that, ideal way to use the combination is to use them separately. Give a beta agonist first. Reason is beta agonist will dilate the bronchi. After 15 minutes, if you give the steroids, the drug will go better inside. But then compliance is a problem because the child gets frustrated taking so many pops. So you get combinations. You get a combination in one inhaler therapy. You can get one pop in the morning, one pop in the evening. So you can do it like that. So these are the combinations that are available. You can get fluticasone, salmeterone as one inhaler, combination inhaler. You can get budesonoid, formiterone as one inhaler. So you can use this one puff in the morning, one puff in the evening. So that is most uh, ideal way, or not ideal, but uh, better practical way of treating these children. So when you start, start with low dose corticosteroids if you are stepping up. Or you start the high dose corticosteroids in here and step down. If they are still uncontrolled, you can add long acting beta agonist. If still uncontrolled, you can add Montelukas. For acute episodes, short acting beta agonist. So you tell them to buy a blue inhaler or a blue rosa cap to be used only if they get suddenly breathless till the time they can reach you. So they can keep it at home, but they are not supposed to use it until unless they are symptomatic. For acute exacerbations not controlled with your astelin or salvitamol, rota inhaler or MDI, you will have to give them nebulizations, you will have to give them oral prednisolone and maybe even oxygen. So this is the way I showed you over the meter dose inhaler, remove the cap, shake the inhaler, bring out gently, put it in the mouth, start the inspiration, press canister and inhale deeply. This is one, but I don't think you should use just plain simple inhaler. Most of the time we found that they are not able to do it correctly. Better to use it with a spacer. Same thing about rota inhaler. I have already told you how to use the rota inhaler. So you can read through if you want to, but I think practical demonstration is better. And spacer, that is multiple breath technique that I showed you. You have to hear that sound. That sound that is there that means we still the breath properly. So that was about asthma. Any questions? Okay, role of anti-histaminics in asthma and nothing. No role of any sexism, no role of any anti-histaminic medications doesn't work. What will it do? It will decrease the fluid in the secretion, make the secretions more thick and cause more problems. So no role. Cetrizin is useful only for allergic rhinitis, not otherwise. Any of these drugs when you are using are long term. Again, when you have to stop, I told you to step down. So you, you can't say, okay, I am going to use only 6 months or 9 months. Till I step down and come down to minimum dose. Suppose I come down to once at night, then maybe I will come to once alternate night. If I find on once alternate night, he is asymptomatic for 3 months, I can stop. So it's not fixed regimen that this is the maximum time I can use. 
Which new steroids are you looking for? Cyclosomonary and monomethyl. Pardon? And you know what they are cyclosomonary? Are they used cyclosomonary? No, we are using only criticism, medicinal and pentomethyl. Okay, these are the only three that we are using. So the newer ones we are not using in children. And I, of all the three, there is a right compliance for children is very nice. Okay? Uh, Child is having only post-natural drip yeah. and cough. Yeah. Without yeah. having any lung signs. Right. Yeah. You will not rule out sinus signs. Rule out allergic rhinitis. If it's allergic rhinitis, you go into a nasal spray. Mostly here, you will only require anti the question was post-nasal drip, no cough, only post-nasal drip and sinusitis, what will you use? That was the answer, you will only use oral anti-allergics, that is uh, anti-histaminics or if it's allergic rhinitis, you will use a nasal spray, that's it. We will go to the next lecture, Dr. Vivek Pagan is here or outside? Okay, he's sitting here, so we will go on to the next one. Thank you.